that brief intro. Um, again, today we are joined by our peer chapters in the uh, cities of Hubli, Mysore, and Bangalore. And uh, Dr. Nagraj Naik, who is uh, from the Department of Nephrology, SDM Darwad, a dear friend, a fellow young Indian member from Hubli, and a, a very passionate advocate for the cause of organ donation, is going to moderate the panel today. So I'll, I'll let uh, Dr. Nagraj take it from here. And, and I really welcome all the doctors for taking your time out to a busy schedule today. And uh, we really look forward to this uh, amazing, important session from all. Dr. Nagraj, all yours. Thank you, Nilesh. Uh, first of all, a warm welcome to each and every one of uh, you. Now, it's like my two mothers. One is Manipal, where I have passed out. They are all my teachers. Second is uh, Young Indians Now. Uh, where I where we do a lot of work. So thank you, uh, Nilesh, uh, for uh, uh, asking me to moderate the session. So uh, young Indians uh, and today's topic, uh, youth in organ donation. So probably they should match together. And that is how we have to go forward today. So young Indians has three pillars. One is youth leadership, thought leadership, and nation building. So one of the pillars, youth leadership, should probably take the organ donation forward today. So without uh, wasting much time, uh, we will go to the business. So we'll start with the uh, first panelist. So he is uh, Dr. Ravi Shankar B. Uh, he is a nephrologist and head at uh, uh, Manipal Whitefield Hospitals. So he is finished his MBBS, MD and DM nephrology. Uh, he has uh, both national and uh, international experiences. He is a fellowship uh, and he has fellowship and membership from uh, uh, Indian as well as uh, uh, foreign societies. He is a fellow of Indian Society of Nephrology, fellow of American Society of Nephrology and fellow of Royal College of Physicians. His field of expertise is general nephrology, dialysis, kidney transplant and interventions in nephrology. He speaks uh, a lot many languages and uh, he has a lot of publications uh, to his name. So Dr. Ravi Shankar, sir, will be speaking on organ donation as such. Over to you, Ravi Shankar, sir. Oh, uh, thank you, Dr. Nagra. That's a huge introduction about me. I'm not that great. So, but anyhow, you are one of our best students and then I'm happy that you are doing extremely well in Darwad. So I'll start, uh, basically, uh, this is a basically a kind of uh, opportunity for us on this uh, world, uh, uh, you know, organ donation day. So I just briefly touch on what exactly organ donation, what are the types of organ donation, and then uh, what is the need, and then what is the criteria briefly. So uh, I'll start with what exactly organ donation means. So it means that a person who can donate an organ from his body to another person who is suffering with an organ failure, which is permanent. It could be a liver, kidney, heart, or lung. So... And then without uh, receiving an organ, he will not be able to survive a normal life. Of course, they'll be on kind of uh, life supportive uh, treatment, but the organ uh, donation and then receiving an organ gives a kind of life to them. That is what is organ donation is meant for. And then why it is important to have an organ donation. So because uh, when you have a permanent organ dysfunction and then you are living on uh, life supportive measures, Obviously, receiving an organ will lead to a normal life of that particular individual. And then if you look at in India now, a uh, majority of the transplants, uh, organ donations are living donations. I would say that about 60 to 70 percent. Remaining 30 percent, 30, 35 percent would be cadaver uh, donations, what we call diseased organ donation. And then uh, there is a huge uh, uh, demand for this deceased organ transplants because there will be, not everyone will have a living organ donor. So they will depend on a deceased organ or cadaver organ for to have uh, a normal life. So there is a huge uh, you know, uh, gap between the demand and the need. And we are still not able to fulfill uh, the donation that can happen because if you look at uh, there is 80,000 uh, you know deaths because of accidents and 50,000 people can donate uh, organs but it doesn't happen all the time only a small percentage of things only happening and then they're do donating the organs so we need to have more awareness about the organ donation both living as well as the cadaver organ donation that is the importance of organ donation 
how so let us come to know uh, like now what are the types of uh, organ donation we have right now so primarily in india uh, it is a, a living organ donation which happens about 60 to 70 percent as i said earlier uh, which means that a person like you and me who are alive we just donate a organ to another person but this is not possible with every organ so it's only limited to some organs especially like uh, those who have like two kidneys we have so we can donate one kidney from two kidneys and then portion of the liver portion of the pancreas can be done whereas heart transplant lung transplants are not possible because without uh, uh, them though nobody will survive so this is not possible with a living transplant so what about uh, diseased organ donations or the cadaver what we call it as so this means that a person who is dead declared brain dead due to some medical reasons and most of these people are admitted in hospitals and then they are on life supportive measures just for living for some time but as per the law indian law a person who is declared as a brain dead is dead so that time the physicians in that hospital or the medical team or the transplant coordinators who work for organ donations they just motivate the family that if they are willing to donate their uh, like person uh, organs to other people so if this motivation process happens effectively and many times these people will uh, the family will agree that okay we would like our person to donate the organs and then they give a written consent and after that the process will continue and there is a retrieval team uh, which will be in the hospital or they go from some other hospital they retrieve the organ and then they transport to different hospitals where the allocation has been given to particularly liver has to go to manipal kidney has to go to apollo hospital but the patient is in some other hospital so this is what actually the cadaver uh, organ donation the entire process takes place and this is purely a uh, kind of regulated by uh, karnataka government what we call this jeeva sarthakate so that means this body is the regulatory body which has all the registrations of the people who want to have the uh, cadaver organ and they keep the list based on the blood groups and then they will allocate according to the waiting list 1 to 10 something like that and they will inform the transplant coordinators of the various hospitals and say that okay you are likely to get a kidney your patient in your hospital likely to get a kidney or the heart or liver so that we activate the patients to come to the hospital wait for the organ once we are declared that okay you are going to get the kidney that particular kidney heart liver will go to the respective hospital and the surgery takes place this is what exactly the cadaver donation and cadaver transplantation process and then but what about uh, natural death people who die of disease not because of this brain death but they die of cardiac arrest due to some reason some disease the heart is stopped but all the vital organs also are here dead so where is the cadaver uh, uh, donor where the brain is dead but all other organs will be functioning so that we get the all other organs but people have died by naturally they cannot donate vital organs because they are all dead so they can only donate cornea and then skin and then bones sometimes a larger blood vessels also being uh, taken and then given to other people or banks they just go to the uh, saving banks so this is what is basically a types of organ living donor and cadaver donor and then we have donations after a natural death okay so then everyone should know what exactly the brain death everybody i said that brain death what what does it mean brain death that means a person who sustained an injury to the brain because of an accident or because of a kind of big bleed in the brain or a tumor or it could be a big clot so this can cause the uh, entire brain becomes non functional because of this uh, disease and then uh, those people are declared as brain dead because the brain is not working they assess the medical team will assess the brain function by various means and then say that okay this person brain is not working it is dead that particular point of time the medical team will say that okay this person is likely could be a donor to a kind of donate is vital organs which are functioning and then after that the process will go on so this is what exactly the brain dead or brain death is so then what is the age criteria everybody will ask that okay if i have a living donor so which donor can donate a, a kind of organ it could be liver it could be kidney so these are the two organs in living uh, donors will happen 
But usually the age criteria for living kidney or liver is more than 18 years of age. But the, the upper limit of age is not like very fixed. And there are donors up to 70 years also, even 75 years. If they're physically healthy, medically healthy, they can still donate the organ. So it is not that exactly age is the number, but 18 years is, as per the law, is the cutoff. They should cross 18 years of age. Then they can be a voluntary donor, either for the kidney or the liver. And what about, are there anything contraindication? That means somebody cannot donate. A living donor or cadaver donor cannot donate. Yes, there are some. some suppose some per person want to donate, but if I found that that patient has got active malignancy, active infection, or some organ damage already is there, usually they are not the candidates to donate an organ, which could be liver or kidney. So similarly, in diseased organ donation also, there are some criteria, like somebody who died of active malignancy, active infections, which can you know, uh, cross-infect the patient who received that organ, or they have already damage taken place during the process of cadaver uh, uh, in the hospital. So sometimes their brain, uh, heart is not good because of heart failure, or the kidney is not good, already kidney function is not good, and then liver function is bad. So these patients also, they cannot really donate that particular organ, but they may still be able to donate other organs. Suppose the liver is not good. So probably we'll say that, okay, liver is, we cannot take, retrieve the liver, but the kidney is good. We still retrieve the, the kidney. And then we transport that particular organ to a different hospital where the allocation takes place. So this is what in general. So what is organ donation? And then uh, what is the uh, kind of uh, types of organ donation? What is the benefit of uh, organ donation? And then uh, what are the uh, like no, uh, indications and contraindications of organ donation? But in general, so we are in India, I would say that uh, predominantly it's a living donor program. The cadaver or deceased donor program is still not very active. But if you compare to last 10 years, we are definitely much above the uh, previous uh, the numbers like uh, we are close to so some hundreds in a month and all. So, but this is what is growing, but we need to have much more awareness of the organ donations, not only the living, but mostly in on cadaver or diseased organ donations, because there is a lot more patients who doesn't have a living donor due to various reasons. They will be just waiting for a cadaver or diseased organ donor to have a life. So I certainly say that last week, uh, two weeks back, there was a patient 51 years of age, and then he was waiting for the last two years for an organ. He got a kidney all of a sudden, and then now he got transplanted on 21st July. And then he was discharged after seven days, his creatinine, he was on dialysis, but creatinine was 0.9, and then uh, hemoglobin is 10. And then he's just totally independent, and then he's sit at home and then doing outpatient consultations with me. Similarly, we have some patients Cadaver, but there are good number of living transplants also. But I am happy that a lot of family members they come forward, either parents or brothers, sisters, including spouses. I have done many spouse transplants, so and they are doing well. Uh, the success rates are pretty good. So I am sure that uh, this program will uh, activate and then inform the younger people to see that how to activate this program, especially the disease transplant program in the city, in the state, and in the country. So that's what uh, my, uh, the uh, information is. So I uh, hand over the, my, my student. Hope this information is adequate. Yeah, thank you, sir, for this elaborate information. In fact, uh, talking about those contraindications, I still remember in Manipal, we had a patient uh, who was a dialysis patient and he had a stroke. Then the family volunteered uh, to donate the liver. So I still remember my residency days in uh, Manipal. So thank you, sir, for the elaborate uh, explanation. Uh, we'll come back to you during the panel discussion. So a lot of sure. questions are pending for you. Okay. Thank you, sir. So now we welcome our next panelist, uh, Dr. Sanjay Rampure, sir. Sanjay Rampure, sir, is a consultant nephrologist at uh, Manipal Hospital, Jainagar. So he's finished his MBBS MD and DNB nephrology from uh, Minu. Uh, he has a, a fellowship of the Indian Society of Nephrology. His field of expertise are hemodialysis, then uh, renal transplant, and uh, 
acute renal failure. He has also had a lot of publications. So I welcome you, Sanjay sir. Over to you. Sanjay sir will be speaking on uh, basically how we transfer the organs from one place to another about Jiva Sarthakate, Green Corridor and the role of transplant coordinators in organ transplant. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Nagraj, for the introduction. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. You are very clear and loud. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Ravishankar has covered most of the topics. He elaborately has spoken, so he left me only a few points to talk. So I'll be talking about organ transfer. What is organ transfer? Organ transfer is nothing but transferring the kidney, which is uh, retrieved from one hospital to another hospital. So one person has two kidneys, and uh, the one kidney will be wherever the uh, organ retrieved, that, uh, that hospital gets the one kidney, and the other kidney goes to the other hospital. So the organ that is retrieved and uh, transplanted same hospital is almost like a living donor, living uh, donor transplant. So not much time is wasted and transplant is more successful there. And if it transferred from one or one, uh, one hospital to another hospital in the same city, so that will take some time. So it might take half an hour, one hour. So that much delay is uh, okay. And if you transfer from one hospital, one city to another hospital, city, that is also called transfer the organs, maybe from one state to another state. So this also organ transfers. So in Manipur hospital, we have done uh, kidney uh, that, uh, transfer from Mysore, Mangalore, and uh, other other Shumoga. So all these places have come to kidney from uh, Manipur hospital because the, the organ uh, the transplant program is not running well there. So in the initial period, now they have their own transplant programs. So initially, we used to get a kidney from other places and used to transfer to a called green corridor. So where in the police used to create the, to clear the traffic and transfer, but that is mainly used for heart transplant nowadays, kidney transplant, because the kidney can be stored in a uh, ice pack for more than for up to 24 hours. So we have got the transplant in Manipur Hospital for up to 18 years hours of retrieval also we have done the transplant, the highest uh, uh, time period where you have done transplant for 18 hours. So this is a transfer of a kidney from or any other organ from one hospital to the other hospital. And green corridor is the one where the police, with the help of police, will create a tra signal free uh, trap uh, road so that uh, uh, the ambulance can come fast and uh, reach the hospital. And it is mainly used for in the heart transplant because heart cannot uh, be kept in the outside the body for more than a few hours. So it is mainly kept for the heart, but kidney can be sustained in the ice box from up to 24 hours. Though for the kidney, the green card is not required for kidney transplant. And coming to the Jeevan Sartakate, so wherever the, there is a, as Ravi Shankar uh, explained, it is a government body created to distribute the organ and coordinate between different hospitals and distribute the organs among the different hospitals. And they maintain a list of all the patient data and when, when, since when they're in dialysis, how many, uh, what's the age of the patient, what's the basic kidney disease, and uh, how long they have been on dialysis and when they got uh, registered for the uh, uh, kidney transplant. Kidney transplant. So overall, the higher seniority will be allocated to the kidney. And the decision of the Jeeva Sartakar is finally in the allocation of the kidneys, but not the individual hospital can decide which kidney to go to where. And also the kidney that is uh, uh, procured in the inside the hospital also, the one kidney which goes to the same hospital also, the hospital cannot decide. It has to be go through, it, it has to go to the Jeeva Sartakar and from there the allocation happens. And also, we get a lot of calls from the patients. For uh, Dallas patient, they say, call up us and tell our relative died. So, in the ease and brain dead condition, can we get, take, take, take the organ from him? So, that is also not possible. Is everything is uh, very transparent. And uh, it is very clear to everybody that everybody should go to the human sartha kate and then they will distribute the organ. They know hanky panky here and uh, no uh, jumping the queue, no uh, influence from the minister, somebody, and nothing works. It's very strict, very transparent. And everybody can see their uh, the number going up or coming down, how many, how long they have been waiting, what is waiting for everything, they'll come to all information is provided in the Jeevan Sadhikata website. And coming to the transplant coordinators, transplant coordinators are uh, either uh, nurses or some sort of trained uh, 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 science graduate who have, who have been trained to coordinate uh, different hospitals or in the, in the hospitals between surgeons and physicians. Uh, to, for the donor and recipient transplant workup and also take uh, the necessary uh, uh, approvals from the government and also maintain the keep the record 
and uh, to contact the patient donor so all this is done by uh, co coordinators who have been uh, specially appointed by each hospital to smooth running of the transplant program i'll hand it over to nagraj to continue the with the other, other panelist and take up questions when we have the panel discussion thank you sanjay sir for the uh, very elaborate uh, uh, explanation of what is green corridor what is jeeva sarthakate then uh, who are transplant coordinators and all in fact uh, recently from darwad we have sent one uh, liver through green corridor so the surgeons were so meticulous in planning because they linked it with the commercial flight and they went one or two hours before the flight they got the liver out and they were reached the airport from stm hospital in just around 8 minutes and then from there it went uh, to bangalore and from bangalore to the bangalore hospital sir thank you sir now coming to our uh, next panelist dr deepak dube dr deepak dube sir is hod and consultant urology robotic surgery and renal transplant at manipal hospitals bangalore so he has finished his ms uh, general surgery from zipmer and uh, his mch urology from sgpgi lucknow uh, he has experience of around 32 years and has performed 750 uh, robotic urological procedures uh, he is uh, the leading uh, transplant surgeon in uh, manipal hospital old airport road bangalore one of the finest surgeons uh, urologists of the country over to you deepak sir deepak sir will be speaking mm -hmm. on renal transplant surgery uh thank you dr nagraj um so basically uh, what happens is transplant uh, re, uh, transplantation kidney liver or any other organ is a combined effort between physicians uh, and the surgeons so for every specialty there is a medical aspect and a surgical aspect so as far as kidney transplant is concerned uh the nephrology or nephrology colleagues will take care of the transplant patient and we get involved uh from the surgical aspects of kidney transplantation so it's a combined team effort that is done uh to 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 carry out the organ transplant how is the organ transplanted uh, obviously it's a surgical procedure and there are a variety of surgical procedures available for the transplantation uh, traditionally it was done using an open su surgery open surgery means involving a cut in the lower part of the abdomen and the donor kidney is then uh, taken and transplanted into the blood vessels into the recipient's body so that was the traditional way and it is still practiced in uh, most places however uh, surgical technology has been advancing over a period of time and the purpose of this improvement in technology is to provide better care to the patient make the procedure less painful uh, allow them to get discharge early from the hospital and then also to carry out their activities normal activities as quickly as possible after the surgery so the entire endeavor in the surgical aspect is to minimize the pain and dis discomfort associated with surgery and uh, improve outcomes so most recently we have uh, started using robotic surgery for doing kidney transplantation this is a relatively new technique wherein it is largely done using keyhole surgery wherein you don't have to make a big cut in the abdomen and the kidney is inserted through a very tiny incision inside the recipient and the entire procedure is done by the surgeon using the facility of the robot so that is a procedure which is evolving we at manipal hospital in bangalore have taken the initiative and we were the first people to conduct the robotic kidney transplant in karnataka and uh, since then we have made steady progress in this technique so it is definitely beneficial in some patients uh, to undergo a robotic transplant compared to the open transplant so that is about how the transplant is done is it a major surgery yes it is a major surgery and it is done in places where there is good teamwork available good icu facilities available and a, a well coordinated team so well coordinated teams will obviously not be available in smaller hospitals you need a larger setup you need icu blood bank and you need a well oiled team with good coordination uh, between the urologists and the nephrologists 
And in that regard, Manipal Hospital again has been a pioneer in providing the best uh, outcomes for kidney transplantation over a period of time. Talking about surgery, it's also important to talk about the surgery for the donor, uh, the live donor. Now, the live donor is a very peculiar uh, situation where this is a completely healthy, normal, active uh, individual in society without any disease. And they have decided to uh, donate one organ or a part of their organ to their loved ones or near and dear ones uh, in order to make them live a normal life. So this is an act of supreme sacrifice. And a large, uh, a large amount of innovation in the donor surgery has been developed to minimize the pain, discomfort, uh, and problems associated with an open operation for kidney donation. Um, <clears throat> in this regard, traditionally, the surgery was done using um, open technique where there was a cut made into the body and then the ribs were uh, cut and then the kidney was removed. But now, uh, for quite a number of years, this has been replaced by laparoscopic surgery for the donor. So laparoscopic surgery is a keyhole surgery which we make small holes in the abdomen and then the entire procedure is conducted and towards the end, the kidney is removed by a very small incision, so <clears throat> thereby minimizing the pain for the donor, allowing the donor to recover fast and to get back to their normal routine as quickly as possible. So again, in this matter also, we have taken a huge initiative for starting laparoscopic donor nephrectomy in the Manipal Hospital Group, and now it is catching oh over almost in many other places. So a lot of advances have been made uh, as regards the technique and refinements in surgery. How much time does it take for the surgery? Well, uh, typically the entire process, <clears throat> that is the live donor surgery and the recipient surgery take about three to four hours. Uh, both are done simultaneously. That is one team starts to remove the kidney on uh, in one of the operation theaters. And on the other operation theater, which is next to it, the recipient surgery is commenced. And as soon as the kidney is retrieved from the donor, it is taken inside and transplanted to the recipient. So surgery approximately three to four hours. Um, uh, it's a big operation, but you, when you have a well-oiled team and good expertise available, these surgeries are done very routinely. Uh, and, and, and without much complication. So that way, uh, I, I would like to emphasize that teamwork is very critical in providing good outcomes for kidney transplantation. Are there any other things to be prepared before surgery? Well, uh, a good assessment is done for both the recipient and the donor. Uh, the critical assessment for the recipient is what is the right timing for the surgery, are they well prepared uh, in terms of adequate dialysis has been given in, if required and their other organ systems are in reasonably good shape, like you need to have a good heart and lungs to undergo this kind of surgery. So a very careful evaluation is done before the actual surgery is carried out. The evaluation is even more thorough for a live donor because this is, again, a normal person who is not suffering from any kind of disease or marginal disease like marginal hypertension or marginal diabetes. Uh, they have to be thoroughly evaluated with the intention that once they donate one kidney, they are able to live completely normal lives after the, um, uh, after the donor surgery has been done. So careful evaluation is necessary before the surgery is performed. <clears throat> And last word, uh, people need to be aware that kidney transplant recipients or like any other organ recipient can live completely normal lives. And they have many questions about, you know, whether they'll be able to return to travel, re return to doing sporting activities and various things. Uh, for the information of people, they conduct a world transplant Olympic Games once in two years where they conduct an Olympics for uh, people who have undergone various types of transplantation and there are transplant recipients who come and do marathon, sprints and all other many activities that are conducted in the, in the normal Olympics. So this is to show that once you have a transplant, you can actually even resume good sporting activities, indicating that you are back to completely normal. And with the newer techniques of transplantation where the uh, surgery has become less painful and uh, fast recovery. 
uh, that also aids in all this. So thank you very much. This is in brief about the surgical aspects. And I'll uh, ask Nagraj to take this further. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak, sir, uh, for clearing all the doubts and confusion about surgery. Because for a common man, kidney transplant, they think, uh, they think it's a very big thing. And probably because of robotic surgery, the morbidity has come down. In fact, uh, I'm very proud to say that I was there when the first robotic uh, transplant took place in Manipal Hospital. Sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, I think uh, we'll thank uh, Deepak Dubey, sir. He has to leave early because of surgery. So on behalf of II and Manipal team, I would like to uh, thank you for joining us and being one of the panel members. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, going ahead with our uh, next talk, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Srinivas R.P. Dr. Srinivas R.P. is a consultant urologist at Whitefield Manipal Hospital. So he uh, finished his MBBS, MS General Surgery and DNB Urology from Manipal Hospital, Bangalore. He has many fellowships and membership, and uh, he has also a lot of publications. His field of expertise is laparoscopic urology, transplant urology, and reconstructive urology. He also speaks a lot of languages, English, Kannada, and Hindi. Over to you, Dr. Srinivas. Dr. Srinivas will speak on uh, how do we transplant kidney, uh, then uh, what are the precautions that the patient should take, and what are the complications of uh, renal transplant surgery. Over to you, Dr. Srinivas. Thank you, Dr. Nagaraj. Uh, uh, on this occasion of uh, Organ Donation Day, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, reach out to the to the common uh, of the country and the state uh, that you know this is the time to you know th to think back and uh, be an organ donor and promote uh, the message among the common public. So since there is a overlap uh, slightly in you know, a few of the topics uh, with our you know fellow speakers. In case is required, I'll try you know speak uh, a bit in Canada in case in case that you know is of use to uh, to the people. So when we talk about uh, this cadaver, uh, that is you know uh, people donating after uh, the death of an individual. So initially the people are looked for uh, suitability and uh, you know matching and whether the organs are healthy and uh, the the organs are tra transported uh, in a cold chain. That is uh, you know it's called as you know. Uh, uh, the you know preservatives, you know suitable media, you know the preservative media. Uh, there is nirdishta vadan taha madhyamadalli kidney na tokon and sheetha sarpali cold chain na maintain mod kondo. Yelli kidney sigato alinda yelli kidney na vahak beko kasi mod beko anga anga na kasi mod beko alli kidney tokon thoga dikhe ankul vadan tha bevastegal mado do nirdishta vada madhyamadal tokon thoga do sheetha sarpali na maintain mado do matte. Uh, government mati sarkar the ankul dinda green card or tire madi kidney na ankul wagi yallik toh ondo koko nidhishwa the jag toh ondo koto idhike jivana sarth kate jiva sarth kate hamke bhala ankula mat kordte so kidney na toh ond hoj mele operation bage ban bato operation no mamuli kinta sab badh operation ne ne ekendre rakta rakta chalne vessels gana na jodus bitto mat mat onta shatta chikizay hechu kame ondo murna gante agon ta operation no kelon sala yarmur Bottle blood beka bodo, rakta beka bodo, plus ido uh, bahala, you know, time sensitive operation. And re, kidney ke blood supply a time ali ili, anganga kasi mara kilin tagondo, inon kadega tagond hokir beka dre, rakta chalane ilde ro drinda, a kidney na bahala naju kagi, bahala sensitive agi, bega ne uh, operation mari mux beko, at the same time, bere patient gaude thara do tonde ankul, anankul agde ro thara mara onta operation ado. Uh, Adabitre bahala jane kien re tenta dre, e kidney na kasi hak beka dre. Uh, Palano Birta recipient, irithala, our kidney in the Tegi Bekanta Kilukilta, our kidney Tegi Oshkatela. A uh, kidney Tegi Oshkat Yavagatanre, a kidney Yadarundu, uh, Yadar serious disease, any serious disease like infection no, atwa, dot tumor, other than either Tegi Bekatwa, Tumba kidney dot did bitto, if the kidney is very huge, doesn't allow the, 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 the donor kidney to, to be grafted. Kasiakiro Angangan, Haka, Aukasha Illa and Bekar, Matra kidney Tegi Bekorto. Anashkok Tega of Shkatela, a kidney Hage Bidbodo, plus a dirotrinda, actually a Palanovigi, no uncool and a kidney native kidney there, on the bearer third than cool. Adrinda, normal Tega of Shkatela, is in a bearer jagadali, Icasina Hak Bodo. You can put the kidney in a different place. And, uh, and you know that there, either Baga, operation Baga, Balajanke, Yen and Agbodon, usually almost no really shaker on the Embatjana, Embatjana Tombajanke, usually you know problems Agodilla. Uh, Agon the sunshine problems really upon the bleeding Agboda operation Jagadali, Atwa, uh, you know, immunosuppression uh, 
ಕೊಟ್ಟಾಗ ಇನ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಗ್ಬಹುದು ಅಥವಾ ಇಮ್ಯೂನ್ ಸಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಸರಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಮ್ಯುನಿಟಿ ಕಮ್ಮಿ ಆಗ್ಬಾರ್ದಲ್ಲ ದೇಹ ರಿಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಬಾರ್ದಲ್ಲ ಕಸಿನ ಅವಾಗ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಆ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ಇಂದ ಇಮ್ಯೂನ್ ಇಮ್ಯುನಿಟಿ ಕಮ್ಮಿ ಆಗಿ ಇನ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಗ್ಬಹುದು ಅಥವಾ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ಸರಿ ಕೊಡಕ್ ಆಡೋಕ್ ಆಗದೆ ಯಾವ್ದೋ ಕಾರಣಕ್ಕೆ ಅದರಿಂದ ರಿಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂತ ಆಗ್ಬಹುದು ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ಅಥವಾ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ನಲ್ಲೇನೆ ಏನಾದ್ರು ಬ್ಲಡ್ ಕ್ಲಾಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಕಿಡ್ನಿನೇ ಏನೋ ಡ್ಯಾಮೇಜ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ವಾಪಸ್ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ಹಾಕಿರೋ ಕಸಿನೆ ತೆಗೆಯುವಂತ ಅವಶ್ಯಕತೆ ಬರ್ಬಹುದು ಬಟ್ ಈ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಗಳು ಕಮ್ಮಿ ಇದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲವೂ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಮಾಡಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಆದ್ರೂ ಕೆಲವು ವಿಷಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಯು ನೋ ಯು ಕಾಂಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಕಮ್ ದಟ್ ಅದರಿಂದ ತೊಂದರೆ ಆಗ್ಬಹುದು ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಏನು ಬಹಳ ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಆದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಯಾವ ತರದ್ದು ಕೇರ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಯಾವ ತರದ್ದು ಯು ನೋ ಹೌ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಕೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಅನ್ನೋ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಕೆಲವರಿಗೆ ಅನುಮಾನ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಮಾಡಿ ಈಗಾಗಲೇ ಈಗ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಬಂದಿರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಬಹಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಆಗ್ಲೇ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಏನಪ್ಪಾ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಯೂಶುವಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸಾಮಾಜಿಕ ಅಂತರ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಮಾಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಸ್ಕ್ ಹಾಕೋಬೇಕು ಆ ರೆಸಿಪಿಯಂಟ್ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ತಗೊಂಡಿರುವಂತವ್ರು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಮ್ಯೂನೋ ಸಪ್ರೇಷನ್ ಸಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಮಾತ್ರ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಇನ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಬರ್ಬಹುದು ಅದರಿಂದ ಮಾಸ್ಕ್ ಹಾಕೋಬೇಕು ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹೈಜೀನ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಹೈಜೀನ್ ಫಾಲೋ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಇದು ನಾವು ಆಗ್ಲೇ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಬಂದಿರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಕಲ್ತ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ವಿ ಇದನ್ನ ನಮ್ಮ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಪೇಶೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ಧ ಶತಮಾನದಿಂದ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನೆ ಬರ್ತೀವಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವೇಬಿನ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಪೇಶೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದೇವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇದನ್ನೇ ನಾವು ಸರಿ ಕೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಸಾಕು ಇದ್ರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಆಪರೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿರೋ ಗಾಯನ ಏನೋ ದ ಸರ್ಜರಿ ಸರ್ಜರಿ ಸೈಟ್ ಕೇರ್ ಊಂಡ್ ಕೇರ್ ಅದನ್ನ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂಡ್ ನಮ್ಮ ನೆಫ್ರಾಜಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಫಿಸಿಷಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಹೇಳಿರುವಂತ ಮಾತ್ರೆಗಳನ್ನ ಸರಿಯಾಗಿ ತಗೋಬೇಕು ಒಂದನ್ನು ಲಕ್ಷ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಮಾಡಬಾರದು ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಫಾಲೋ ಅಪ್ ಕರೆದಾಗ ಫಾಲೋ ಅಪ್ ಬರಬೇಕು ಇಷ್ಟ್ ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಇನ್ನು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ಇದಕ್ಕೇನು ಮಾಡೋ ಅವಶ್ಯಕತೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂಡ್ ಈ ನಮ್ಮ ಆರ್ಗನ್ ಡೊನೇಷನ್ ಈಗ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಬಂದಿರೋದು ಈಗ ರೀಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿ ನಮ್ಮ ನಮ್ಮ ಚಿತ್ರ ಕನ್ನಡ ಚಿತ್ರರಂಗದ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಂಚಾರಿ ವಿಜಯ್ ಅವರು ಮಾಡಿರುವಂತಹ ಗ್ರೇ ಒನ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ಏನೋ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಅದರಿಂದ ಇತ್ತೀಚೆಗೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಮುಂದಕ್ಕೆ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಟಾಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟುಡೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಾಗರಾಜ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಜರ್ ಸರ್ ಮಾತೃಭಾಷೆ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಮಾತಾಡಿದಕ್ಕೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಪ್ರೊಬಬ್ಲಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೈಲೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ Uh, because you're talking in kannada we are all very very happy sir yeah. thank you thank you and, uh, thank you thanks for uh, bringing out the minute uh, points also in fact our cm uh, uh, basavraj bamai sir has also pledged his organs today and uh, probably there are lot of organ donation programs also from the government today thank you sir thank you Great for thank explaining you. Thank us you. in detail thank you thank you thanks for the opportunity now uh, moving uh, to uh, with our next speaker uh, he is again um, my teacher dr gk prakash sir a senior consultant in uh, nephrology at manipal hospital maleshwaram after his uh, mbbs and md he was trained in dnb nephrology uh, at apollo hospital chennai under dr mani who is the stalwart of nephrology in india currently is working with manipal hospital maleshwaram as chief of clinical services and consultant nephrologist uh, he is a consultant uh, in manipal hospital uh, from 2002 onwards uh, he has lot of publications to his uh, name and also honors and achievements he was president of nephrology association of karnataka 2011 to 13 recipient of the rashtriya chikitsak ratna award delhi and has more than 50 abstract and 10 publication over to you gkp sir uh, he sir will be dealing about the most controversial part of uh, today's talk that is myths about organ donation in the society it's it's very difficult to convince the people because they have their own uh, belief own myths so sir is going to address about that over to you gkp sir sir gkp sir
how uh, deficient we are in in uh, trying to uh, identify a organ donor. Uh, if you can uh, understand that there are almost two and a half lakh kidney patients who are awaiting kidney annually, and we do several thousands of uh, transplants in a year. Likewise, liver transplants, the uh, people waiting for liver is almost uh, to the tune of uh, 80,000. The heart is 50,000. And if you look at the scenery worldwide, you can see that the best country, the best country which does maximum number of uh, transplant is uh, uh, Spain, which has almost 43 or 44 uh, donors per million population. And you compare it with our country, the latest information tells us that it is just 0.9, dispel 0.9 uh, donors per million population. So this is the disparity we have in our country. So that is the gravity problem. The, sec the, the next uh, myth would be about uh, people saying that my religion won't uh, permit me to uh, donate any kidney. So it is absolutely uh, uh, not true because most of the religions be it uh, Buddhism, be it uh, Hinduism, Islam, or uh, Judaism, they all support wholeheartedly and they feel that this act is an act of compassion and uh, uh, generosity. So there is absolutely no uh, uh, problem from any religion that uh, they discourage uh, the organ donation. That is the second, uh, uh, second or third myth, what we can say. Third thing would be that, okay, I, I donate the kidney and then subsequently they feel that okay the, my family member would not be able to see my body uh, as I was before. So actually that is not right. The truth is that it is like some surgical means, uh, surgical procedure when we do for a normal living individual. So the organs are uh, nicely uh, treated in the sense that uh, with honor and dignity the donors are uh, uh, looked after and uh, the body is absolutely uh, kept in a good shape and uh, uh, decor and then the organ is the, the, bot, the donor's body is handed over to the patient so that myth absolutely is not true and then coming to the other uh, myths probably i am too young or too old and i have a medical disease is what uh, people tend to think and this is absolutely not right uh, anywhere from five years to almost 60 years, anyone and anyone can donate. And uh, these days, even younger ones, younger ones meaning even uh, the, the age of two to three years, we take as uh, a prospective cadaver donor. And as uh, aged as almost 60 to 70, like what our colleague mentioned about the upper limit of the age, also can be taken as long as they are medically fit. I think they can be taken. Uh, the other uh, bit uh, which has been um, doing a lot of rounds is about uh, my organs. Uh, will uh, will they take other organs when I pledge for a single organ? Absolutely no. If somebody has uh, pledged for kidneys, in fact, we have a scenery in the, we have a seen recently in the medical uh, MHV that uh, one of the patient categorically said that okay, he wants to donate only kidney. No other organ. So that is absolutely not right. Whatever organs somebody pledges, only those organs will be uh, taken is what I would like to say. And uh, the other thing is organ trading. Organ trading according to the act of uh, that uh, Human Organ Transplant Act, uh, which was framed uh, as early as 1994, it said that the, nobody can really trade any organ and it is uh, punishable under the law is what they uh, say. And the last bit probably would be that uh, people say that, okay, I have donated uh, my organ uh, this time. Will I be born with a uh, uh, deficient organ in my body subsequently? Which uh, uh, I don't think so. We can never uh, accept this uh, argument because the uh, nobody, uh, we are not at the mercy of anybody. The uh, Almighty or the Creator has his own. Uh, uh, way of do doing things and uh, creating things. So absolutely, that's also not true is what I could say. That's all about uh, some of the myths. There are too many myths, but I would like to just concentrate on these uh, couple of ones and then uh, end my uh, talk on that. Thank you, Nagaraj. Thank you, sir. I think uh, you have uh, 
brought out uh, clearly all the controversial points so there should not be any controversy on the controversial points uh, in fact uh, about speaking about religion dr balal sir also took part in one of the programs in 2012 called santa sangama where there were a lot of swami ji is virendra gade sir everyone where they propagated uh, organ donation and so all religions should support organ donation but it is individual choice thank you sir thank you for the elaborate explanation now next moving on to uh, the next uh, panelist today uh, dr vishwanath sir dr vishwanath sir is the head of uh, the department and consultant nephrologist and transplant physician at manipal hospital bangalore uh, old airport road he has over a decade of uh, experience is a gold medalist uh, uh, in his uh, dnb days and he has been uh, uh, associated with lot of uh, publications over to you vishwanath sir vishwanath sir will be dealing with role of youth uh, in organ donation uh, so probably uh, this is what we have all gathered here today probably the the uh, uh, gist of today's topic probably he will be speaking over to you vishwanath sir thank you thank you nagraj uh, as nagraj mentioned uh, today's uh, main emphasis is on youth and um, i would like to say few words about what is the role of youth in promoting organ donation as we all know youth is our strength and youth is the strength of any country if you can educate youth and make the youth aware of the importance of organ donation nothing like that it goes a long way in educating the whole society especially if youth is educated it will be continued to the next generation to come and as we all know india is said to be at prime because of the younger population the same thing if you take western population most of the population is actually the aged population so in general most of them feel india is at its prime because of the younger generation if we can educate the youth and make sure they have the right things in their mind they are going to carry on for the next generation so this is the importance of educating the youth who will who are the basically torch bearers of any society so that's the reason youth should be strengthened they should be educated and they should be made aware of the importance of organ donation who are the people who are going to carry forward next coming to the next question how can youth contribute to pledging and awareness so as i mentioned earlier youth is our strength and they are the guiding light so youth is the guiding light for the older generation and fortunately they are also the hand holders for the next generation to come that's the reason if youth is well educated they will be able to guide the older generation and take along with them the next generation to come in a proper direction that is very very important as uh, dr srinivas mentioned sanchari vijay by donating his organs has created a huge awareness in the society people have become more aware making aware is more important especially in the crucial time of uh, brain death of an individual in the family when somebody has to take a decision if the youth and their family members are educated they can take right decisions at right appropriate time if somebody has pledged their organs and if the youth in the family doesn't allow the organs to be donated then it will go waste so as you know in our country even if you pledge the organs at the time of donation the family also should give con consent that is where youth comes uh, in the form of educating people creating awareness and taking the society to the higher level coming to the next uh, topic what is the role of organizations like uh, youth india lions club rotary club definitely they are the ones who are going to create this awareness so as you know young indians are creating this platform to educate people spread awareness and make sure we educate people so organizations are definitely doing wonderful job in creating awareness and in fact many of the societies like lions club rotary club they have their own dialysis units where they also serve the society this is very important coming to the question of how is manipal manipal uh, hospital helping organ donation manipal hospital as we all know is at the forefront of educating and educating the society not only in the education education of the society also is very important so a part of it is definitely educating the youth in fact many educational programs are taken uh, undertaken by manipal hospital it is actually part of corporate social responsibility 
including uh, we go to various offices. I myself have gone to various um, software companies and given educative talks, how to, what is kidney, what do they do, how to take care of your health, what is uh, the importance of hypertension management, how to recognize early, what is the lifestyle modification. So all these things we are uh, educating, trying to educate more. In fact, we have tie-ups with numerous schools in educating the young minds, which is very, very important. So if you sow the seed at the right time, they will be the future of our society. So that is very important. We have also done a lot of vaccination drives in schools to the teachers and other people. In fact, uh, the Manipal Hospital has been promoting a lot of organ donations. I don't know if uh, Nagaraj remembers, we had one uh, Yatharth kid. This was just before Nagaraj joined. He was a five-year-old kid uh, who had unfortunate event of brain death and their family gave the organs as a cadaver donation. So they, in fact, saved eight lives. So in the honor of them, and this, this was a sacrifice which was ultimate. You, you cannot donate if you are not in the right frame of mind. Thanks to the parents, both of them, in their grief, they donated the organs. We did transplant. All of them did well. In the honor of them, we have what is called as Etarth Foundation and Manipal Foundation, where we are, in fact, doing free kidney transplants for the needy, especially pediatric kidney transplants, which we have done numerous in the recent times after the Yatharths. Unfortunately, these parents had one more kid. And when the mother came and delivered to the Manipal, it was like a festival to us. So this is where Manipal uh, stands out, where we try to educate people, create awareness, especially in the youth. And we do have a lot of corporate social responsibility to take forward in educating society. Thank you, Nagaraj. Thank you for the opportunity. Hope uh, we were able to justify the questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. In fact, I am very grateful to you for talking uh, totally non-nephrological issue, which is probably a social issue and addressing it uh, so nice. Uh, thank you, sir. Probably uh, we uh, as uh, young Indians and probably other organizations like uh, Rotary and Lions and of course, all the youth have a bigger ro role to play. Probably Nilesh must have made a note of it and probably in our future programs, we will involve much. Now we all are youths, but probably we have to involve much more youths in our future programs. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now uh, we will move on to the panel discussion. So I want, uh, I request all the panelists uh, to unmute themselves and uh, to switch on their videos. Uh, so is Deepak Dubey, sir, there or he has left, sir? No, I left. saw him. Uh, he's not there. Okay, sir. So I think all his questions, uh, Shinima sir can take up. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. Yes, sir. So we have one uh, question from K. Arusha. Uh, doctor just said, in spite of one's wish to donate, uh, many a times kith and kin go against it and do not permit it when alive. How does the person make sure that it doesn't happen? Is there no law? If not yet... Is it in the making? In fact, many times uh, I get a lot of queries for, uh, from my friends also. No, I pledge, so I should take the decision about my donation. In case of eventuality or uh, brain dead, why should my parents uh, uh, address this? So can GKP, sir, uh, take this question, sir? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, what is important here is to note in our country, it works like that. We need to definitely check with the family members before uh, allowing somebody to do, uh, take uh, away uh, men, uh, his organs for uh, retrieving, you know. So unfortunately, that is a, a norm and rule in our country. So I don't think so we can uh, deliberate on this or have any second opinion on this. Some uh, rule, ruling has to come subsequently. I don't know whether it will ever happen, is what I can say. In fact, sir, uh, countries like Spain, I think there is an opt-in and opt-out facility. Yeah, it's so there in Singapore. Be... Singapore is an automatic opt-in. If you want to opt-out, you have to say that I don't want to donate. Otherwise, automatically it is taken that organs can be donated. Yeah, and that's the reason that in Spain, like I said, the number of transplants, cadaver transplants are the highest in the world, almost like 43 uh, uh, per uh, million population. And like well, rightly what you said, they have that uh, opt-in or opt-out. Uh, opt opt and uh, we should be happy to note that uh, the central government of India also uh, is bringing in something like this. Uh, it is very good. 
And the second thing what they're doing now is that they're trying to have uh, these cards imprinted uh, on the driving licenses yes. so that uh, some good awareness is created. So these two things, I think, uh, are really worth noting. Now, next question is uh, to Dr. Vishwanath, sir. Dialysis or kidney transplant? If I am a renal failure patient, so dialysis is better or a kidney transplant? Which is better cost-wise? Uh, the quality of life wise, I am I am probably a 40 year old guy now uh, having renal failure. I am uncomfortable on dialysis. Why should I not continue with dialysis? Why all the programs about organ donation? Why transplant? I am very comfortable on dialysis. Absolutely. Dialysis uh, is good. It is one of the good form of renal replacement therapy. But again, dialysis is something which doesn't replace the kidney completely. So as we all know, even on dialysis, creatinine can be a little higher. It won't come back to normal. Transplantation is the only way where kidney functions will be completely normalized. And in fact, there is no need to come back for dialysis. Dialysis means every other day you have to come for the hospital, have dialysis and go back. The quality of life will be much lesser compared to the transplant. Coming to the first question of cost, initially cost of dialysis may look a little lower. But if you look at recurring cost, Monthly cost, if you add to the year, overall cost will never come down in a, trans, in a dialysis. Once you have transplant, the initial cost may be higher. That's the reason many people think transplantation is costlier. But after the transplantation is over, overall cost will come down. Maintaining a transplant patient after about an year or so with medication will be very, very minimal. Compared to dialysis, it will be almost 10 to 20% of the dialysis cost. So upfront, if somebody can has a donor, or has a cadaver donor and has a transplant, overall cost over a period of two years actually will come down significantly compared to the dialysis. And as you mentioned, why should I have a transplant if I'm good on dialysis? For somebody who is 40 years, definitely quality of life improves after transplantation. They can get back to work. They can do whatever they want. In fact, we have a lot of software or people who want to work outside India where they can have transplant and go back and work wherever they want. Dialysis is not like that. If you are on dialysis, you need to arrange dialysis and go. Every other day, you have to visit hospital. Quality of life will be much better in transplant. And most important thing uh, for many of them would be fertility. Whether they want to have children, whether uh, they want to get pregnant, transplantation is the only way where they can have children or get pregnant. In fact, my next question uh, was the same uh, to Ravi sir. So, transplant any day better, cost-wise, quality of life-wise. So, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm comfortable on dialysis today. So, uh, tomorrow I might be fine. So, always transplant is a better option. Okay, sir. Ravi Shankar, sir. Now, can I become pregnant while I'm undergoing dialysis? Or should I compulsorily undergo transplant to have a baby? From our, uh, uh, so many female uh, dialysis patients, they will be having query. Often when we go for rounds, they'll be telling, no, doctor, why? I can become pregnant on dialysis. Why organ transplant? Can you address this question, sir, Ravi Shankar, sir? Yeah, certainly. Uh, it's a very important question uh, uh, for ladies especially. It's, uh, yeah, there is a remote possibility that somebody on dialysis for long periods can conceive. Okay. But the percentage is very, very small. And then it is not like uh, we can say that, yeah, you have a, a reasonable chance. So I would say that somebody is wanting to become a mother and then on dialysis, oh, the chances are very remote. And then even if they conceive uh, by chance during uh, dialysis time, and then uh, there are a lot many things we have to do uh, you know, in, during, uh, in dialysis because they have to be on dialysis every other day, something like four to five days uh, in a week, they have to be dialyzed. And then we have to take a lot of other uh, important things during dialysis. They should not have a drop in blood pressures, other complications might cause abortions and all in these patients. And then uh, again, pulling them for nine months on dialysis is really, really uh, tough. And then it's a Hercules procedure for physicians as well as for the patient also. So uh, even though there is a remote chance of becoming pregnant on uh, dialysis, but uh, it's not a really a kind of a very good option because there will be complications during dialysis and then it's very difficult to pull on for nine months 
on dialysis. But there are okay, reports uh, in India also. We had a couple of uh, uh, people have become pregnant during on dialysis. And then uh, we have uh, uh, many, uh, some reports from abroad, especially the Canada, I was there. And there is something like a, they do a nocturnal dialysis, daily dialysis. They'll be on at least uh, 9 to 12 hours dialysis every day. So those people, uh, the survival of the baby and then the complications will be very less. So if you want really, uh, if somebody conceived by chance, they want to have a good outcomes, we have to switch over the dialysis to a, some kind of nocturnal dialysis, daily dialysis, and give a smoother form of dialysis for many hours so that we avoid the drop in blood pressures, which is not good for the, the, uh, the baby. So this is what has to be done uh, uh, in those patients who conceive by chance, but the chances are not very great. I had seen one patient in uh, Canada that she conceived one, but luckily she conceived second. And then in fact, that lady was asking for third. So the physician told that, no, no, no more uh, this thing, you undergo a sterilization, something like that. But yes, it's possible, but the remote uh, chances are very less. But yes, after transplant, yes, you have got a very good chance. I had my own patients like now who had become father and then we have patients, our own patients become pregnant after two years of transplantation. So dialysis, yes, but uh, complications are a little more. And then uh, she, uh, they have to go through really a kind of Hercules procedure. Yeah. So you mean uh, that uh, a kidney failure patient, uh, so he has a better chance to uh, become pregnant, female patient, if uh, they undergo a renal transplant rather than being on... Yeah, obviously, transplant. obviously. The renal transplant, everything will reverse. Their ovulatory cycles uh, will reverse and then menstrual pattern will change. So they gain their hormonal things to normal so, so that they have a very high chance of becoming uh, pregnant after the transplantation around two years time, one and a half, two years of time. But on dialysis, uh, very uh, remote chances, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, now my next question would be to Dr. Srinivas, sir. Uh, which yeah. other organs can be transplanted with kidneys simultaneously? If so, which are the organs that can be transplanted? So we hear of a lot of multi-organ transplants and all. So can any other organs be transplanted with kidneys? See, uh, if the question is, can any other organs be transplanted? Yes, there are various organs that can be transplanted. Uh, you know, you can uh, transplant uh, liver with the kidney. You can transplant pancreas with the kidney. And, uh, you know, uh, but... But the common thing that actually, depending on the disease of the patient, you know, depending on the, the pathology, that is the problem which is affect, which has caused the kidney disease. That problem can also affect the, you know, the liver or the pancreas and all that. So the, in that, the common combination would be, you know, kidney and the pancreas. There's the common, you know, organ that sometimes, you know, is, is, is involved. And slightly, you know, slightly less common is, you know, kidney and the liver that can be transplanted. So both can be transplanted sometimes. It's better if transplanted from the same donor, like you know, the deceased donor, the that is after the death of the, the person. So, so most organs can be transplanted together. So uh, thank you, sir. So it means that uh, not only kidneys, with kidneys, we can also transplant pancreas, we can also yeah. transplant liver with the kidneys. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, my next question would be uh, to Dr. Sanjay, sir. Uh, I am a common man. Uh, I have uh, I have attended your webinar today. So I am very much motivated to pledge my organs. Now, how should I go about it? Where should I pledge the organs? Sanjay, sir? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. See, yes, sir. The organ donation website, you can pledge the organs or you can talk to your doctor. If you're treating physicians, you can talk to your doctor or your organ donation website, you can go and pledge your organs. The government of Karnataka is operating a website where you can pledge your organs there and take a sticker also from there. Okay. In fact, there are many sites, Jiva uh, Sartakate, the Karnataka government body, where we can uh, pledge. One more is Mohan Foundation, that is Multi Organ Harvest Aid Network. In fact, our own uh, young Indians, we gift an organ, uh, we have our own link uh, for uh, 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 pledging the organs. 
so probably there so we have to contact our doctor or hospital or said that is what you mean uh, by telling we can pledge okay, yeah that's sir. correct yes sir okay sir uh, thank you sir uh, do we have time uh, to go ahead with some more questions uh, or uh, should we take the uh, recipients of the organs on board shrinath are you there yes sir so the recipients are there uh, they are also uh, see so can we take the recipients on board and then uh, we will again go ahead with the panel discussion if the time permits can we do that yes yes okay now now our first recipient is mr vinod gauli he is a 27 year old gentleman who had renal transplant on may 7 2000 21 wife as his donor can we have mr vinod gauli vinod is there or shall we go ahead with our next uh, recipient yes, subramani subramaniam is there in the line okay no problem yeah. uh, you just try to connect with uh, mr vinod gauli uh, in the meanwhile we will uh, go ahead with uh, mr subramaniam He is a Kedava transplant uh, recipient uh, done in 2021 at Manipal Hospital, uh, Whitefield. He is a 51-year-old uh, uh, gentleman. So, Mr. Subramaniam, are you there? Idira sir, Tau. Subramaniam sir. Yeah, now now he is there. Subramaniam sir, Namaste. Namaste sir. ನಾವು ಮಣಿಪಾಲ್ ಹಾಸ್ಪಿಟಲ್ ಹಾಗೂ ಯಂಗ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ವತಿಯಿಂದ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸುತ್ತಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹೌದು ನಾವು ನಿಮ್ ಕಡೆ ಏನ್ ಇದು ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಕಿಂತ ಮುಂಚೆ ಹೆಂಗಿತ್ತು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಆದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಏನೇನ್ ಬದಲಾವಣೆ ಆಯ್ತು ಅದನ್ನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ವಿವರಿಸಿ ಹೇಳ್ತೀರಾ ಸರ್ ತಾವು ಹೇಳ್ತೀರಿ ಸರ್ ಮೊದಲು ತುಂಬಾ ಊಟ ಮಾಡೋದು ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಓಡಾಟಕ್ಕೆ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ರಾತ್ರಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೀರು ಕುಡಿದು ಕುಡಿದು ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ನೀರು ತುಂಬಾ ಕುಡಿಬೇಕಾಗಿತ್ತು ದಾಹ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಓಡಾಟ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಓಡಾಡಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಮತ್ತೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಒಂದ್ ದಿವಸ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದ್ ದಿವಸ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿರಲ್ಲ ಆ ತರ ಇತ್ತು ಸರ್ ಆ ಡಯಾಲಿಸಿಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ ದಿವಸ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿರ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮೂರನೇ ದಿವಸ ತಿರುಗಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಸರ್ ಹಾಗೆ ಊಟ ಸೇರಲ್ಲ ಒಂದ್ ತಿಂಗಳ ಇತ್ತು ಈಗ ಅದೇನು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದೆ ಆರೋಗ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಹಳ ಬದಲಾವಣೆ ಆಗಿದೆ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಆದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಈಗ ಹಾಸ್ಪಿಟಲ್ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ವಾರಕ್ಕೆ ಎರಡರಿಂದ ಮೂರ್ ದಿನ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲೇ ಕುತ್ಕೊಂಡು ತಾವು ಏನ್ ಬೇಕೋ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಕೆಲಸಗಳನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ನೀವು ಬೇರೆಯವ್ರಿಗೆ ಏನ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಕೊಡ್ತೀರಾ ಸರ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಡಯಾಲಿಸ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಇರ್ಬೇಕಾ ಅಥವಾ ಅವಕಾಶ ಇದ್ರೆ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಕೋಬೇಕಾ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಸರ್ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿಕ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಆಯ್ತು ಸರ್ ನಿಮ್ಗೆಲ್ಲ ಒಳ್ಳೇದಾಗ್ಲಿ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಭಾವಿಸುತ್ತೇವೆ ಸರ್ ದೇವರೆಲ್ಲ ಒಳ್ಳೇದ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಣಿಪಾಲ್ ಹಾಸ್ಪಿಟಲ್ ಹಾಗೂ ಯಂಗ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ತುಂಬಾ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಸರ್ ನೀವು ಬಂದಿದ್ದ ನೀವು ಒಂದು ಪ್ರೇರಣೆ ಆಗ್ಬೇಕು ಸರ್ ಎಲ್ಲಾರ್ಗೂ ಆಯ್ತು ಸರ್ ನಮ್ಮ ರವಿಶಂಕರ್ ಸರ್ ಇದಾರಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಇದ್ರೆ ಸಾಕು ಸರ್ ನನಗೆ ಯಾರು ಬೇಡ ಸರ್ ಇದಾರೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಾಗರಾಜ್ ಯು ಕನ್ವೇಡ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯಂ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ರೆಸಿಪಿಯಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಡೋನರ್ ಬ್ರೈನ್ ಪೇಶಂಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಗಿವ್ ಗಿವ್ ದ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೌಡ್ ರೆಸಿಪಿಯಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಟು ಸಿ ಹಿಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಶ್ರೀನಾಥ್ ಡು ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ರೆಸಿಪಿಯಂಟ್ ವಿನೋದ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ಲಿ shortly yes. okay so till then can we go ahead with one or two more questions yes yes okay uh, so this question is uh, uh, for vishwanath sir sir there is a wide gap between organ requirement and organ donation what do you think are the top reasons that uh, resist people to stay away from organ donation as gk prakash sir mentioned there is definitely a lot of people who are waiting for a transplant and then many of them don't survive to receive a transplant so this wide gap is probably due to couple of reasons one is as you mentioned uh, the awareness is much lesser people don't come forward for donation that is where we need to educate our youth that's where young indians will 
play a major role in educating people creating awareness so that people come forward to donate so the message should be please donate the organs instead of burning or burying them that is where we can bridge the gap unless we do that uh, people will be actually waiting for a transplant in in fact in vital organs like heart and liver you cannot wait for a long time to have a transplant and unfortunately these organs cadaver is the only way to do transplant heart only cadaver is possible at least kidney and liver part of it you can try live but few organs like lung and heart you need to have cadaver unless you have cadaver organ you cannot sustain with the recent covid many of us we have seen lot of people having permanent damage to the lung and many of them need a lung transplant people are going around with oxygen at home going around with oxygen cylinders where people need a vital organ like lung that is where we can bridge the gap by creating awareness having more organs pledged and family honoring the decision of donating organs and giving the organs to the society whenever that time comes that is where we can reduce this gap if this gap reduces significantly we can increase the survival of the people and people waiting for a vital organ so probably you think sir with lot of uh, awareness programs lot of change in policies by the government probably we can bridge this gap absolutely absolutely thank you sir uh sanjay sir i am uh, taking you slightly into the controversial shows every few months the newspaper report about organ trade i sit i i is it because the doctors are greedy or is it something else why this newspaper report there's a kidney racket there's a organ racket see it's a controversial in the sense see it's not so the so simple so without doctors involvement uh, no transport can happen okay hospital doctors are involved in transplant see some racket is happening means it's a combination of many things agents uh, hospital doctors society so everyone will collect depending upon the doctor cannot uh, say that i don't know about the donor because once i see a donor i know whether it related or not the transplant coordinator sees a donor he knows the is related or not so doctors are so intelligent so they can identify which is the real donor identify and the fake donor so there is a complicit involvement of the doctors hospitals everybody in this fake racket uh, kidney racket and every every now and then uh, it erupts sometimes uh, recently it has happened in kolkata and uh, in kochi so many different places one uh, erupts and then it becomes a big issue and it will be uh suppressed and in some other city will happens so it's a combination of factors greed greed or greed also important doctors also greedy the doctors are not uh, super humans they are also normal humans and they are also greedy they also want fame hospitals want their fame so it's depends upon the institution what what is their uh, this one uh, morality what they stand for in the society whether they want to make money through greedy means or normal means so it depends upon the hospital hospital society doctors everybody is involved okay sir i think then probably we have to have our policies right when we choose our donors and recipients probably we follow all our legal steps like how we follow in manipal or st probably then probably we might not yeah manipal we are not been doing and andre transport for long time right. we are just, just doing related now because we have become uh, quite no well known in the society and our results are very good so we don't have to do any uh, the, the other than uh, no, 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 illegal things to do to make f- famous or to earn money so but there may be some individuals who are uh, c- c- coming up they want to run faster b- become more famous and earn our uh, fast money so they may get involved in all these things and they get trapped so it's the uh, police and everybody should be very tough and then do uh, the thorough investigation and punishment should be there otherwise uh, this will keep on erupting here and there uh, in uh, different parts of the india okay sir thank you sir probably we should get all our paperwork right and we should not do controversial things which are uh, not there in the law probably then we can get saved from all this rackets all this problems
Only way to prevent these rackets, Nagra, just a point to add, is to have more cadaver donations. So when you have adequate number of cadaver donations, these things will never happen. If you have cadaver which is fully legal one and it is fully fully regulated by the government, where you cannot do any other hanky-panky things, so that's where you can cut down all these illegal transports. Well said, sir. Probably if if the cadaver donation picks up in India, I don't think... uh... The live donations will. You don't need a live transplant at all if you have adequate cadavers. But also, yes. patients Pale. become very desperate for transplant. Yeah. See, they have no other option. No cadaver is happening, and only yeah. the donor, the no donor, the family. Absolutely. So they become desperate, and people are going to Pakistan, Turkey, Singapore, Sri Lanka, and they're selling out crores of rupees for transplant. Because yeah. in India, it's become more and more tough. The legal system is becoming more and more uh, tough. So they are not unable to find any unlimited uh, transplant. They are going abroad. I mean, people who can afford. Unaffording people are continuing dialysis. Sir. Yeah. So, so the cadaver uh, program picks up. They they know that uh, if you uh, wait one or two years, I don't have to do all these things. I mean, in a couple of years, I'll get a transplant. So they keep quiet and then wait for the turn to come and save the money for transplant. Yeah, actually. Uh, uh... To compare the data in India cadaver transplant, being South Indian, I am proud that you know we are doing much more uh, cadaver transplants in South, especially Tamil Nadu is the pioneers in this, and then they started a very aggressive program, and then after that uh, the other South Southern states have picked up. Compared to Northern India, we are much better, but we are still not up to the mark. I mean, we have to really go up on the numbers, and then definitely we have a scope. So, because there are a large number of hospitals in Bangalore, we'll get uh, a lot of accident cases and all, but the motivation is still has to be more and more and then retrieve the uh, donation should happen more. As I mentioned that in India, total 80,000 accidents will happen and they die, but uh, 50,000 donations can happen, but doesn't happen. So, these uh, many things, many cases will be keep, uh, you know, uh, going without donations. So, we should have more and more awareness and motivation. Probably in one day, we'll hit a good number and then, yeah, we'll come across all these difficulties. Those who are waiting on dialysis, some people might die on dialysis also. We lose them because they don't have a donor. So it's really painful, but yes, someday definitely it will. we have a hope that we will overcome these difficulties. So the next question is to you only, Ravishankar, sir. So uh, my family has... <clears throat> Uh, one person who is suffering from kidney disease. Another relative of mine has just met with a road traffic accident and he has a brain death. So why should my family not get the priority of my relative's organs? Is there any system like that? Where if my relative, uh, in case of any eventuality to me, brain death to me, my relatives have a priority of getting organs because they want to donate the organs? Uh, yeah, this question is uh, sometimes we come across in our practice and then we keep seeing here and there. Some families will uh, uh, kind of ask us like whether we have a patient uh, waiting on dialysis in some other hospital, can we uh, get a kidney to that particular patient? Unfortunately, uh, I mean, uh, this is not there in our law. And then uh, the law has been made that whatever the donation takes place, and then there is no directed donation. What we call the family cannot ask or cannot direct that whether one kidney or some one kidney or two kidneys, whatever it is, the organ from that patient has to go to his relative uh, wherever he is undergoing uh, dialysis. And the law is very strict and the rules made by various governments all over India, this directed donation uh, will not happen. I mean, uh, as of now, the law is like that. So it, it doesn't happen. So... That's what uh, I cannot say why, but uh, yeah, there will be a lot. Many people will come and tell that, okay, I have one patient in some other part of the state. So can you just do that? Can I have a directed donation? So which the do- law doesn't allow as of now. And then it has to be, has to go to a pool and then it will be uh, uh, distributed to or allocated to uh, whosoever on the top on the waiting list. It cannot be a prioritized uh, uh, donation towards any patient relative who is suffering from the uh, any organ failure, either liver, or kidney, or heart, whatever it is, it doesn't happen that way. 
Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So probably, so if I have a relative uh, who is on uh, dialysis and I have another relative who has brain dead, so there's no priority. No. So there's no directed donation. No. The next question is to Srinivas, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, kidney transplant, uh, in, uh, transplanting the kidney, will it harm the other organs? Uh, the, that is the most common question which we in come fact, across. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dr. Nagar, it's very obvious, you know, many people think about this. See, in fact, by, by doing a transplantation of the kidney to a person who has, a, you know, diseased kidney, which is, you know, failed kidney, uh, it actually augments all the other, you know, organs functions, you know, it makes the heart better, it makes the liver better, it makes the nerve better, understand? So, overall, all the rest of the body organs will become significantly better functioning. But only thing is, during the transplant, okay, so intraoperative, that is during surgery and immediately after surgery, or because of the surgical difficulty, okay, there can there is a small risk of adjacent organ, you know, injury and all this, which is like part of any other surgery. So not unique to kidney transplant, but yes, because of the kidney transplant, adjacent organs can take a small injury, but nothing very specific that these organs will be injured. It's mostly all organs functions will be augmented. So overall, the body's you know the person's you know uh, well-being significantly increases because of the transplant. No such you know is to be supported. So, because of a kidney transplant, there's no major complication to other organs or no, other no, no, not at all, not at all. Yes, Thank you, sir. Uh, next question is to GK Prakash, sir. Uh, many times patient tell, uh, see, my number is 10th or 15th or 20th uh, in the cadaver list in a particular blood group. So, some MLA wants to talk. So, can you please um, make my number come up? Or so many things in clinical practice. So rich and the famous people get moved to the top of the waiting list while regular people have to wait a long time for transplant. Is it true, sir? Uh, absolutely. It is a wrong notion uh, if somebody has. In fact, uh, what we had proposed several years ago is that not proposed. In fact, uh, the criteria were a little different before you people even joined. The Karnataka, then it is to be called as Forte. Then we used to have some fixed criteria. Fixed criteria meaning medical conditions wherein we can override and then take them based on scoring. So then it was uh, possible probably. But now the Jivana Satakate, which has come into uh, fort uh, from the Karnataka government, there's no way we can uh, probably jump the queue. So that uh, notion of uh, trying to influence somebody doesn't exist is what we feel. But like Sanjay, what Sanjay was trying to tell. Uh, I don't know if uh, in, in our country, the, uh, India is a country where it's a paradise, we say. India is the best country to live in because you can do so many things which you can't do in any other country. So if that system, if somebody works at, the, at that level, I don't know. We are not aware and we don't encourage at all. So, so that, that's all we can say. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. One last question before we wind up to Vishwanath, sir. Uh, uh, our uh, K.R. Usha has asked uh, Vishwanath, sir, uh, what has made people in Tamil Nadu more open to ideas? We say that so many times Tamil Nadu, Telangana is doing very good in cadaver organ donation. Uh, what, what might be the reason, Vishwanath, sir? The only reason I can think is awareness. That's where uh, the crux of our uh, theme today of young Indians where we need to educate people and also media. Media should give right education to the people. No point in continuously streaming COVID cases, people are dying, things like that. We should also show them positive things. That is where media, media people, young Indian associations, associations like Rotary, Lions Club come in a big way in educating the youth the general public and everyone on cadaver donation. Otherwise, there is nothing new that Tamil Nadu people are doing, Telangana people are doing. In fact, now Gujarat is also leading in cadaver donations. Few states, there is no cadaver donations at all. If you look at Delhi, very, very minimal. Not even one happens. So, But Delhi is the most educated society, but still, why it is happening? So we need to set the frame of mind. We need to create awareness among people and tell them this is the way forward. Instead of unnecessarily wasting organ, try to save lives. That is the only way we can educate people and create more and more awareness, something similar to Spain, what G.K. Prakash sir mentioned. So 
that is the only way to increase the cadaver donation so many times uh, people may not be aware that something like this is there so if we are if they are aware definitely the families will come forward and if that person is already made a pledge of donating the family should honor that that's the only way to increase the donation similar to tamil nadu and uh, other states i am sure religion is same in all the states i don't think there is any only one religion in one state so it is nothing related to the religion it is probably the frame of mind yes yeah, sir sir i think just to add uh, yes, just sir. to add to dr vishwanath's uh, you know comment which is very very valid it's purely the frame of mind so you know there are you no know, thousands of people dying every day you know i'm saying in the world uh, because of the waiting for the kidney transplant plus millions of people dying for other reasons organs are being wasted it's only the frame of mind that most people can't think of you know when i die i should donate they can't think of their death therefore they don't want to go discuss deliberate think okay let me you know make my uh, pledge my organs let me become a organ donor people do not exactly. get into the frame of mind so that's where the awareness will really help this program like this organ donation day will significantly help i feel so definitely yeah, think, today, uh, the last thing would be it. i think probably at the grassroots level we do, we need to do something here grassroots level meaning you will have to go to schools colleges and then textbook should should have a chapter on organ donation and center okay. state should do, do something like what the karnataka government has uh, nicely done wherein uh, the availability of uh, dialysis is offered to all the talukas districts and all such moves should come from the government side also and uh, like uh, vishnath and others said probably we need to have ppp like arrangement and uh, as you know i, I don't think I, uh, i would like to just tell you that the data group your sbi bank your uh, our own times of india Uh, and others are uh, doing wonderful job Absolutely. by trying to uh, mean, uh, propagate this uh, knowledge on uh, yeah. so i think we should go to that level i think there's no point in trying to speak to the superiors or at a, a different level probably we need to go at the grassroots level and then uh, communicate this thank yeah. you probably education of the society from beginning i mean younger generation would be useful <laughs> and then uh, you look at uh, now if you go to any of the corporate big big uh, you know top education uh, institute where there is no nothing will be shown there so probably not only in the hospitals we project in the hospital saying that organ donation is organ donation is good but if you go to people non medical you don't see anything there anything there we talk once in a while and all but it has to be a constant process so to show them that this is what is uh, you know needed so hospitals is fine people come diseased and all they will say that okay okay and all but it should be coming for the public so there is more awareness even the most educated people they do not know today morning i put this program in our like in our community many people uh, sent me a message saying how to pledge organs so they do not know how to pledge organs one person said that long time back i signed some paper and all so i said that i do not know about the paper but now it is online it is available please go to just pledge organs you get a website open you register and you get a number also so and then inform your family that you pledged your organs so that's what also is important because if you don't Absolutely. tell anyone and then i pledge my organs you met with an accident and then who will uh, you know say know that okay is pledged his organs probably in my family i told everyone that i pledge my organs so they should know that okay he has pledged his organs and when the organ it happens like that by bad luck whatever it is unfortunate thing then uh, they they say that yeah he has pledged his organ so that's what is needed in our community so in the community level we have to do a lot and then awareness and then unfortunately some of that uh, even our medical institutes themselves they will see that why i should do many years back uh, one of the top institutes in our state they said why should we do for it? they feel that in the organs are going you know some other uh, people it's like a charm which is very very unfortunate it's not charm it is basically giving life to somebody who is suffering and then you know who is going to die if they are not going to get transplanted and apparently people have to understand dialysis is an expensive uh, procedure for the people and then they spend lot of money and then if they have don't have insurance coverage and all it's really uh, you know tough actually and the quality of life doesn't change much on dialysis i mean they still continuing same restrictions everything and then uh, apparently yeah transplant or either disease transplant or the living transplant which makes uh, definitely a, a difference so we should educate